But on a serious note, to the extent that black relationships have survived as they have, what say you about that 400 years later? It is amazing that uh, black relationships have lasted for 400 years. They lasted this morning. They're also going to last tonight, and you may not even know the person to whom you will have the relationship with. <laughs> but they do tend to go over. Relationships do go over like that. And as we move into what has happened to this, I know that our relationships sometimes really reach a low ebb. That's one of the reasons why we wrote the book, How to Find and Keep a BMW, a Black Man Working. That was spelled out in there. It's just very serious. Because relationships, our relationships didn't start yesterday or last week. It also started 400 years ago when those 19 persons were here. And I want you to remember something very important that one of our by any means necessary power brokers told us, and that was Malcolm X. He said, if we can only remember that you didn't land at Plymouth Rock, Plymouth Rock landed on you. And it's very essential that we kind of keep this in place. And knowing that these are the things that happen, then we have to move more to change it. See, we have a system that would not like to see black males and black females together. They would not like to see that happening at all. Because once we come together, they understand the power of the strength of the black woman, the queen of the universe. They know that, her strength. They also know. They also know the power of the black male, the warrior. If you would turn him loose, he will protect also his family and things that need to be done. And because they understand that if our relationships are together, then they will lose. But if our relationships are torn up, then we can forever be treated in certain ways by the oppressors. That's why they gave us something called integration, which is nothing but the illusion of inclusion. They gave us this. They actually gave the statement. And when they gave that statement, it meant that they could go right into your homes. They went into the black homes now, the powers that be, and told us that you cannot discipline your children anymore. And if you discipline your children, you will go into jail. It's this kind of thing they told us. Now, this is amazing that, you know, the black uh, parents who in Africa, that was out of the question. Some social worker come in there saying you can't discipline your children, the social worker would disappear. As you all know, this kind of thing would go on. You would be sitting in a place like this and all you had to do was act up and do something wrong and all your mother had to do was to glance in your direction. Do y'all remember that? <laughs> and you remember that the glance meant don't let me have to get up and come over there. <laughs> and every once in a while in the black family there was a fool who would challenge the glance. <laughs> And if you could get home over the foot, over the ironing cart, over whatever, you were sent to the backyard to get something off the peach tree. <laughs> and if you brought something in that was too short, <laughs> God forbid that you would do something like that. But then it got so terrible in frightening us. This is why we got to take this back. And this is the best part of our action plan is to reclaim the minds of our children because then they went into the public schools and took discipline out of there. So when we acted up in there, they put our boys, our black men, into something called special ed classes. Those special ed classes are nothing but holding cells until they can go to the state prison. But this is what they did. And then, the one thing that they knew that if we can put them in prison, if we can have them convicted for a felony, then once they get out of prison, they cannot get a job because of that. They cannot get the job. And then if they happen to eke out and find a job, then they have to pay taxes on a job, yet they cannot vote. And I call that... I call that taxation without representation. That's what we're looking at. 
And if one of the things that we would learn to do, they did a grand thing when they took that discipline away from us because when they made our parents afraid to discipline the children, then what happened? We found out that the teachers were afraid of the principals, the principals were scared of the superintendents, superintendent was scared of the school board, school board was scared of the parents, parents were scared of the children, and the children ain't scared of nobody. The last statement, the reason why we're so pleased to have the covenant, it makes all of this type foolishness stop. It's going on under Angela Glover in San Francisco. It's all over the country. And they're all saying, we finally have a movement where we can take back over the minds of our children. And the first thing we got to take over, the covenant taught us that we do not have to have black leaders anymore. It told us because everyone in this room is empowered to be a black leader. The one in this room. Because, because see, right now, right now, these people that you're calling black leaders are not what they used to be with Marcus Garvey's day. They're not what they used to be back in the days of W.E.B. Du Bois or Martin Luther King. Those were the people that got us together and planted a strategy, and we're not looking for fame. But today's black leaders, I'm afraid, have become leading blacks. And don't ever confuse leading blacks with black leaders. <laughs> Let me tell you why you don't do that. One of the reasons you don't confuse them, black leaders are chosen by you. They're chosen by the people they're going to lead. They're chosen by us. But let me tell you about the leading blacks. The leading blacks are chosen by the media. <coughs> leading blacks. Leading blacks are chosen by ABC, all broadcasting Caucasians. Should I, should, 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 I, should, I, should I stop her or let her go? Now this is the last one. This is the last one. It, leading blacks are also chosen by NBC. Nothing broadcasting but Caucasians. <laughs> And the rest is chosen by CBS, the Caucasian Broadcasting System. And when you allow, when you allow leaders to be chosen by the media that's owned by the corporations, when you get ready to change your lives, when you get ready to demonstrate, when you get ready to march, when you get ready to come to the covenant, when you get ready to endorse and make a, a Tavis one of our next elected officials, well, what happens? You must take the time to carefully watch and see what the leading blacks are doing. Because that's when the leading blacks sneak into the door to the corporations, and they will tell the corporations, oh, we know how to go and put them down. We know how to get you some real affirmative action Negroes to come in here and work. We know how to do that. But at the end of the day, the leading blacks lead the corporations, and the leading blacks have gotten paid while we have gotten played.